we're going to look at Joe, the evolution of the overcurrent protection device and where we stand today. Absolutely. Now, back when I were a lad, and perhaps even more so when you were a lad, we used to look at miniature circuit breakers as the absolute cutting edge technology that could be installed for overcurrent protection, didn't we? Yeah. It wasn't that uncommon to come across fuses still being installed. Effectively, a small piece of copper wire that would melt before the conductor melted. Yeah. Great technology. <laughs> So yeah, we've come, we've come a huge distance yeah. and the, the, the miniature circuit breaker was a fantastic device. And yeah. it's got two key elements in there. Joe, do you want to remind us of those two key elements? Yeah, absolutely. So you've got your biometallic strip inside there. Yeah. That's there to protect against overload. It's not what I refer to as a hysterical device. So it doesn't trip, it doesn't overreact to things. If there's a little bit too much current flow and it'll start to trip, but it won't trip instantly and it'll take a little while to do that. Okay, yeah. So the overload can be removed. And of course, we've also got in there our electromagnetic coil as yep. well, which is there for short circuit protection for those times when you don't want the biometallic strip going, oh, maybe I'll trip, maybe I'll trip. Yep. So it looks complicated from the outside, actually real simple device yep. from the inside. Yep. So it replaced a piece of copper wire yep. with two other elements that in order to protect yep. the circuit. But we went on, didn't we? We went on to create more and more protection. We then added in something we called additional protection and we had to add Absolutely. what, Joe? Then we started using RCDs. We now did. again, back when I were a lad, and even more so when you were a lad, we used to, you know, what did we RCD protect? We might think, now, could that socket potentially be used outside? Better put an RCD on it. <laughs> and then go on your summer holidays, spending the entire time worrying your downstairs socket circuits, RCD would trip, the, oh, oh, normally the minute the door shut <laughs> for you to go on your journey to your holiday and then spend two weeks defrosting your freezer. There was a, sure. yeah, a lot of concerns around the RCD and tripping mm, freezers yeah. in the early days. Yeah. And then of course, we know that that has become much more stringent in its use and yeah. it's, it's practically ubiquitous now, isn't it? It's difficult to do uh, an installation now without installing RCD protection, which is, only a good thing. Yeah, especially in domestic circuits, yeah. isn't it? And we've seen also how the A type and the AC type and the B type, mm. etc., have now become really, really important when we're looking at yeah. the 18th edition. This being an old AC type of RCD and something that maybe now we're not even installing yeah. these types, are we? Very much so. So, you'd have your RCD protection and your MCB protection you sitting would. side by side, but look at that, three modules taken up, Gaz. Surely we can do better than that. What was the next stage? Yeah, we condensed the RCD protection into one device. We got the RCBO, yep. and that brought along this fella here, mm. which meant that we could remove that and that and replace it with just one device. Yep. So we've actually therefore got uh, RCD, overcurrent, and short circuit protection in one device, Joe. Absolutely. Real clever. Yeah, and of course, there you've got the old uh, fly lead there for the CPC connection onto the earth bar there as well. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the neutral flying lead there also. So. That was, again, when that came out, what a great bit of kit that was. And it crammed all this technology into it. We've got exactly the same as before. Do you want to go through this with the same Joe? So we've got the... Yeah, so we've got the same device we had before, biometallic strip and electromagnetic coil. So again, there's your uh, MCB technology, if yep. you like. And then strapped on the top here, you can see you've got your toroidal core there, which is monitoring the current flowing down the line and back down the neutral. And of course, Gary, we've then got this. This is the, the bit where it starts to step away from us a little bit. We've got a little PCB in there. Yeah, the printed circuit board appears and then all of a sudden insulation resistance testing becomes a little yeah. tricky. Don't want to start passing 500 volts through that. So yeah. it, was a, it was a leap forward, but at the same time, there became some extra precautions, obviously, for the electrician when installing and testing circuits mm. protected by RCBOs. For sure. And then this is where it really starts to get interesting, isn't it? Because about 18 months ago at the time of shooting, which is not that long ago at all, we were blown away, yeah. weren't we? Because we got, we received our very first ever uh, miniature RCBO. Now this was the first time we'd come across one of these and we thought this was amazing because they'd managed to take somehow all of that tech and bung it down into this. We no longer had this massive upright bit sticking on the top that housed all of the RCD components. It's all inside there. That alone, I think, is pretty amazing. And it was, and there were some other uh, electrician's features that were really handy. The fact that when you actually turned off mm. the combined circuit breaker yeah. and RCD function of the RCBO, you actually isolated the top section, yeah. so you could then start carrying out your insulation resistance yeah. test from the top. So yeah. improvement from size, so yeah. more room in your actual consumer unit, yeah. but actually from a testing point of view, it became a little bit easier no as well. No longer had to disconnect the circuit out the top there, absolutely. which is absolutely brilliant, yeah. We leap forward probably only about another 12 months, mm -hmm. and we introduce a new protection device yep. alongside the RCBO. Absolutely. So now here we've got our miniature RCBO. 
And strapped to the side of this, we've now got our arc fault detection device, which is an absolutely brilliant bit of kit here. And the purpose of that, Gary? Well, for serial and parallel arcs, mm. okay, there's a big uh, debate and always been online between a spark and an arc. It has yeah. to be for <laughs> a certain amount of current for a certain duration in order yeah. it for it not to be a spark, in order for it to be an arc. Yeah. And then these will clear these devices. I think it's quite common practice in North America to protect circuits by mm. arc fault detection devices and use a slightly different acronym for it. Yeah. So what we've really got there, Joe, is effectively strapped to your miniature RCBO is a computer. That's what I would say. Yeah. We, we haven't got a clear <laughs> version of this to go oh there's lots of stuff yeah. inside I here. I think we'd go wow look at all those printed circuit <laughs> boards in there that's fantastic yeah the issue now comes again because we've, we've strapped this across the side we have to start thinking about testing again mm -hmm. you don't want to start passing 500 volts through your yeah. um, our fault detection section here on the side. So it was a massive leap forward, but then went back to taking up two ways in the consumer unit, Joe. Yeah, but again, it's still pretty good. You think about all the protection that you've yeah. got here. You've got overcurrent, you've got short circuit, you've got earth fault, yes. and you've also now got arc fault protection as well. So a real powerhouse of a protective device there, which I think is a pretty cool thing. One more step. No, so, no, no, no. Can, can we cram all of this into a single module device? And the answer is... Apparently <laughs> so. I mean, this, this just blows my mind now. And bear in mind, 18 months ago, we were blown away <laughs> by the miniature RCBO. And yeah. now we've got all of the protective devices that are in there combined in here. So we've got inside here all of those protections that we just spoke about. We've got Overload protection. Yes. We've got short circuit protection. We have. We've got earth fault protection. Yep. And we've got heart fault protection as well. It's incredible. If you if you line them up, the original RCD, yep. the original <laughs> MCB, and if we take half yep. of this device, so, so ignoring that, that bit, yep. so we've got one, two, three, four ways in a consumer unit. All yep. of that technology has been condensed into one device. That is phenomenal. That is amazing. Yeah, that is yeah. a huge leap forward Absolutely. in the ability to produce and manufacture a device of such uh, such quality, I would suggest. Absolutely. This one's by Wilex. We do like the Wilex yep. brand. We've also got the ones here by uh, Crabtree, yep. and we also like the Starbreaker design, don't we? Because yeah, yeah. it removes the need to connect that to that the bar, first bar. Yeah. Yep, you connect it straight into the actual Starbreaker design. They've come up with some interesting sizes as well, which is what I like. Yeah. We've got... Six amps, we're comfortable with a six amp one. Let's leap forward. I volley them in all <laughs> yeah. the time, yep. yeah. Yeah, I think there's a 10. Yep. yep. Then we leap forward to 16, 13, 13, 13, 13. 13. That's curious. Yeah, he's curious. <laughs> and, and ruins a, a, a part of the teaching that I've used for years where I've you said. You have to go back through some <laughs> notes, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> where I say to my learners, if they ever mention 13 amps, the only place you ever yeah. see a 13 amp fuse is in a plug top. I've got to now swallow deeply. Yeah, so they make 13 amp, 16 amp. We've got 20, 25 has been okay. introduced. Wow. Uh, we've got a 32 and we've got a 40. So all of those here yeah. are not just MCBs. They're not just RCDs, Joe. Yeah. They're RCDs, MCBs, and arc fault detection devices in wow. a single module unit. Wow. And what, again, blows my mind, the short period of time, the sort of the acceleration of that sort of protective systems that have now been combined into one. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? Where are we going to be 12 yeah. months from now? Yeah.